Hi friends, welcome back to Common the Chaos Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Daveen and I homeschool four kids ages 11, 11, 12, and 14. Today I'm going to give you a look at Bookshark H. <laughs> So this is what my currently sixth grader is doing for science. I'm doing a mix of this and some other things on my own. Just ignore this nail polish here. I got this from our parent partnership program. So this is the condition I got it in. So a little bit of nail polish here and there. But this is Bookshark H. And some of you know that I really like sunlight. And when I get stuff from my parent partnership program, it has to be Bookshark because just non-religious. So this is the non-religious program. However, I do find them to be very similar. The books are very similar and I often don't use the guide in that I don't really read a lot of the notes. I really like it for the scheduling and the books that Sunlight and Bookshark provide. So here is Bookshark level H. Um, it's conservation, robotics, and technology. There, let's see, on the first page here, it said for ages 12 to 14, so that would be normally what, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. I am using this for my seventh grader, but we are using it for her first science credit. So it is going to be for her ninth grade year. She's ready for that, she's ready for a challenge. And so we are going to be using mostly the robotics and technology portion of this. And I have added some additional books on top of that. If you'd like to check out my seventh and eighth graders curriculum picks, I do talk about their science and what we're doing for science and how we're mushing these things together. So I will link that in the description box below if you are curious, but let's take a look at this guide. Okay, so we have the different sections. We have an introduction to our instructor's guide, schedule notes and activity sheets, instructor guide resources and new user information. Quick start here. And then here is the introduction. It tells you how to use Bookshark. You can take a look at those if you're interested. But section two and the schedule notes and activity sheets are what I'm going to be focusing on. So I'm gonna flip right now, first of all, to section three, instructor guide resources. And so here is the list of books. I'm gonna give you a look inside of these. So Robotics is this book here. Um, she has been doing this one. She actually just finished the assigned pages for this. I don't think they go through the whole book, but she has been, she just finished this one here. So there's the table of contents, timeline, and the world of robotics. Maybe she did read. The book's not super, super large, but not sure. I don't think she did the whole thing. She did do some experiments in here, some of these building models. And her um, science kit came with a lot of the things she needed for these. So that's kind of what that one looks like, robotics. How super cool tech works. So this is the one she just started today or yesterday. I don't know. Super cool tech. Oh, let me see. Ugh. I'm opening this up. All right. This book might be a little older. <laughs> okay, all right. There we have the table of contents. All right, so just to see what that looks like. Very interesting layout. <laughs> all right, so there we go. That's that book. Canals and Dams. All right, that one here. It's the Build It Yourself series, so it's the same as the robot Robots one. The same style. The layout is quite similar. So you're gonna have some things teaching them about stuff, and then they're gonna have some things to do, some experiments. So the experiments for this one are taken out of the books that they use, I believe, primarily. Okay, we have energy. That one's here. 25 projects. Investigate why we need power and how we get it. 
very similar to the Build It Yourself series. It looks like it still is a Build It Yourself series. All right, so same thing. Looks like it's going to have experiments and things to do in here as well. Okay, then we have the Industrial Revolution. It's also part of the Build It Yourself series. And start have a timeline in the front there, and then going through the Industrial Revolution, and they continue to have experiments and things they can do, hands-on activities. Okay, we have Planet Earth, which is also build it yourself. Planet Earth, finding balance in the blue marble with environmental science activities for kids. Same layout, we have a timeline there, and then we have, this one looks a little newer. I don't know if it's a more recent edition. It has color, a little bit different from the other ones. So there's that one. Then we have garbage, part of the build it yourself. Follow the path of your trash with environmental science activities for kids. So, so. So also more of the moder more color inside than the other ones. Might be a newer edition. Okay, and we have Weather and Climate Change, a Sporn book. Let's see. There's the table of contents. Sorry, there's a little bit of a glare. And just a typical Asborn book. Looks like that, very colorful. Okay, and then let's see, we have their science supply list, and I'll have to grab her kit to give you a look at that. But they tell you what they provide, the weeks that it's used, what they provide, the weeks that it's used. And we'll take a look at the supplies that you will need to add in a second here. And then some recommendations for teaching science, and I really love this. You can get this off their website. They will tell you what they're learning in each week, and that's how I kind of decided where we're, what we would be doing as far as how much we would be doing in this, this year. So basically, I'm going to go up to the Industrial Revolution and keep it robotics and technology focused this year. All right, so let's go back to part two. Uh, schedule notes and activity sheets and so this is what the teacher section looks like we have pages 1 to 14 in robotics so I'm going to show you what that looks like here so we turn so one so this is what your child would be reading in one day so this one if you watch my sunlight G which is the year before this one I will say that this one has a significant amount more of, in my opinion, reading and activity questions than the other one. So in that way, it was appropriate for me to give my seventh grader this because she is just ready for that. And then activity sheet questions, one to eight. So that is a lot. In G, they were doing one to three, and here they're doing one to eight. So let's take a look at that. Oh. I don't have those questions here. Okay, my parent partnership program took them out of here because they didn't want us to use them. But I do have them to show you because I basically, I made this booklet for my daughter so that she can have the schedule herself so she can check off as she's doing things. And she also has the activity sheets here. I don't think she'll mind you seeing these, but. So what she did that first day, she had to answer one to eight. So those there and there and up to there. So that was quite a few pages, I would say, for day one. But she's been able to handle this. So she's, like I said, this is for her high school level credit. So I guess it's appropriate. And then they tell you what they provided and 
what you have to provide this week was quite a lot but we were able to make it she made let's see where do they say 24 to 26 this is what she did she made a vibrobot vibrobot <laughs> basically it turns out to be a little robot that will jump around and draw like that so you put markers on it and it vibrates and it will jump around and draw things so she had to put that together and so they did we did need to have a few things but these were things that we had for example wire cutter foam mounting tape we just used duct tape or masking tape markers cardboard lid box i feel like this was quite a bit i don't think they usually ask for this much and they provided some things and then here they tell you what you need for the next week. So she made a uh, robot mm, skin. It's basically like, what? Not silly putty, but it wasn't sticky. I don't know. She made that the next week. So then here we have some notes for the activity sheets down there. Have some notes here. Same thing, some notes on each day. And then over here we have the answer key, thankfully, because I would not be able to be marking all of that if we didn't have an answer key. So you can see this week she has one, two, three, four, five, six, six pages to do, six workbook pages. I'm just gonna give you a look at what that looked like for the first week. So she did this the first day, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's for the week. 22 questions for the whole week is not too bad in my opinion. All right, so then here's week two. So same thing, they're reading certain, maybe about 10 pages, 10 or less pages, seven activity questions. And then they have on the fourth day, this is a four day week thing, on the fourth day it's a lab or making something. So three days of reading, one day of lab. There's notes for each of the days and then the answer sheets. And then normally when you got this, you would have your activity sheets here that you could either photocopy or you could just take out and give to your child depending on if you plan on reusing. This is week three, very similar. Okay, so that is pretty much what is in this guide. I'm gonna go grab her lab kit and show you what that looks like okay so here is the lab kit it is quite large i would say compared to other ones i've seen and we have gotten into it so we'll see just gonna be a quick look inside so things have been kind of messed up at this point but there is the list of items that come in the kit and this is sort of what a bunch of things in here that she's going to be using. It's really nice. I do recommend getting the kit if you can. Oh, the wire cutters did not come with the kit. We just have it in there because we used it for one of the things. But yeah, comes with a big, like, wow. Okay. <laughs> we use that for the week two. Yeah, so it just has all the random things that you wouldn't want to have to go buy. And hopefully there's not going to be too much for us to have to look for because that is sort of one of the I don't mind well I don't love doing science experiments but I don't mind it if my kids will do it themselves and then if they just have everything they need and then they'll go do it then I don't mind so that is yeah very large large kit here okay so that is a look inside bookshark h um, let me know if you have any questions. I would love to answer them in the comment section below. And yeah, so thanks for coming today. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.